I'm going to invite you to um, get your eye rolling and sighing done all over because I'm going to ask you to, to get together with some people. So just go ahead. Oh, I hate doing this. Just uh, moan if you want. That's good. Nervous laughter is fine. That's wonderful. All right. Here's, so here's the drill. The drill is this. You're, I'm going to invite you to get together with one or two other people, and I'm going to invite you to talk with them about what do you know about Jesus. That's the topic. What do you know about Jesus? It can be historical. Well, I know that Jesus' parents were this and where he was born, and I know I, you could recite some of the things that you learned during Holy Week from week after week. You can, you can talk about experiential things. You can say, well, uh, I happened to find who Jesus was when I went to camp or when I talked to some friends of mine in a youth group or whatever it was or, or when I came to a worship service or I saw Billy Graham. Some of you can go ahead and talk about some of the theological things that you think about Jesus. Um, why do you think he's God? What are some of the aspects that Jesus has? I, there's no police. No one will be asking you what you found out. All you have to do is talk to each other about what you know about Jesus. Now, if you'd rather, and, and I'm going to give you permission to go anywhere you want. You can leave the, you can leave the sanctuary. You can go around the narthex. You can go find out what they're doing out there in the Wesley Hall because they're fixing all the stuff for Monty and Nancy's birth or anniversary party, and I'm sure they have cake that you can steal. Um, <laughs> You can, you, can go, you can go outside. It's beautiful outside. You're going to get three, about three minutes to talk with anybody that you want to about what you know about Jesus. Now, the deal is you can stay here in the sanctuary. You can be seated where you are. You can gather people around you. And if you don't want to do this, remember all you have to do is when someone asks you, just say, I'm, I'm going to think about this on my own. Or you can always do this, and people will leave you alone. All right? So that's, that's the deal. Um, I'm going to give you three minutes. Go. Not much. No, not kind of a stationary group today.
About 30 seconds, so start to wind it up. You don't want to stop. So during the past three minutes, do you think that you learned everything there is to know about Jesus? No. How many of you actually did talk about Jesus at least initially? Okay, that's good. There, there's all kinds, I mean, obviously in three minutes, Jesus didn't even do it in three minutes, right? Remember, he started with them, and he's walking on the road to Emmaus, so from um, Jerusalem to Emmaus, it's seven miles, and they're walking along, depending on what kind of clip they are, that's a good couple hours at least, and he doesn't, um, he even takes a lot longer. And he's talking about the scriptures all the way from Moses all the way up until what happened to, the, to him. Um, but they don't know that it's him, right? They, the, the scripture says, well, I liked what the scripture says amazingly. So um, it says in here, now they're walking along or whatever, and, and, they, and Jesus comes up to them. And as they talked and discussed these things, Jesus himself came up, walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. They were kept from recognizing him. Now, that's not fair, is it? I mean, here he is coming alongside, and, and all of a sudden, and they're, and they're discussing, and, and he just kind of gets into the conversation. Have you all known people like that? Yeah, and it's and and sometimes you are well. It depends kind of on their demeanor and all that stuff. But sometimes you your gut says, um, you know, we probably it's nice that you're here. And we do the oh good morning and how are you? Do the Minnesota thing, right? How are you? To which they are supposed to respond, good. And they're also supposed to say, and to which we are to respond, and then you are to leave. I mean, if, they're, if you're strangers, you're, if you don't know each other, that's, that's the end of the conversation. Or if you want to get more engaged, you would say, uh, you'd look out the window and you would de decide what kind of weather you liked. You know, if, if you looked out the window right now, you'd say something like, great weather we're having. Isn't it nice to have spring, right? Or if you look out the window later on today when there's a thunderstorm, then you'd have to talk about that. And if it gets cold later on, said, oh, I'm so tired of this. I wish, you all know the drill. But that's about as far as it's supposed to go. So here's these two guys, and they're walking from Jerusalem, and they're talking about everything that had happened. So I need to frame this. It's, this is Easter day. So this is Easter day. So Jesus has risen from the tomb. They have some kind of idea. So they're, they're close. They're, they are followers of Jesus. They're not the 11, but they're followers of Jesus. And they have known something about what happened that day. Because they're going to tell Jesus. Remember, one of the things they're going to tell Jesus is that one of the things that happened was um, the women went to the tomb and they saw angels. Now, it doesn't say that in the scripture like this, but this is, I think this is what they'd be thinking. So there are two guys, and they're talking. And they're saying, yeah, there's a bunch of women who went to the tomb, and they think they saw some angels. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they did. And, and then they said, well, and then some of our companions, see, notice they didn't call the women the companions. You've got to remember back in this time, that women's voices were unheard of. To have them and have them named in the scripture is like, wow. For women to find Jesus at the tomb instead of the guys initially is wow. We don't see it with those same eyes any longer, but for them, that's what they saw and that's what they heard. And they said, then some of our companions... They went to the tomb and they found it empty, but they didn't see Jesus. And then this guy who's walking alongside of them says this. Um, basically, are you stupid? That's, that's the really living version. Okay. 
I know that some of you would say, Jesus would never say something like that. All right. So he said, um, you know, are you so slow to, know, to not remember what had happened? What, what has to happen to the Son of God? That all these things have to be taken place. And so then he begins to talk with them from Moses, the prophets, and through right there at the end of the, at the whole end of the crucifixion. And they're walking along and they're talking about those things. And again, I can't help but focus on that little tiny part of that verse. And they were prevented from recognizing him. Now, I've watched lots of movies. Some, some of the movie premises, sitcom premises, are something like this. Uh, have you ever seen it where somebody, we, someone pretends that they're dead so that they can hear what's going to be said at their funeral or who's going to show up? Uh, it's been in all kinds of things. That's not what's going on here because Jesus is omniscient, which means he knows all things. So he doesn't have to pretend to see what these guys will sell. And I don't think he's trying to make fun of them and say, ha ha, it's really me. And, uh, I mean, I mean it was, it's, he's a fun guy, but I don't think that's what he's doing here. They were prevented from recognizing who he was. There are times, friends, that we will go through our life that we know what we're supposed to believe in. But for whatever reasons, whether it be sin, or whether it be temptations, or whether it be our faith isn't, isn't as strong as we hope for, that we start to lose focus on the one who can always bring us through. Because in the scripture, it's very clear that Jesus will always bring us through all situations. It may not always be how we want to have him bring us through, but he will bring us through. Today, Monty and Nancy are celebrating 50 years. Did she leave you? <laughs> yeah, she left you. Oh, she's at home. Well, that's... She's getting grandpa. So for 50 years, can you imagine living with Monty for 50 years? Was everything rosy? I can tell you, Monty doesn't have to say a word. It wasn't. But they got through it. And I believe that Jesus is the way to get through all things. We may not always understand how that's going to work. But we're not called to understand how. We're called to understand who. And we don't even have to have a full grip on everything that there is to know about Jesus. No. There are times when God intentionally says, right now, my friends, you don't need to know that. If knowing was the only thing, that we, then um, the whole idea that our culture would know all things, most of you have smartphones, and you could, you could dial up anything and find out what that is, but it's not just knowing. It's knowing. So they go on, this group, and they get to Emmaus. And I, these guys were sure Minnesotans, I'm sure. So it, it's night, and um, Jesus acts as if he's going to go farther along. And, did, and, the, and the, no, don't, don't, you, oh heavens, you can't go any further than this. You come on in, we'll find something to eat. You can stay here for the night. That's good for, oh, we got some hot dish in there. We got, oh, I, I don't know why we got, I know we got a rhubarb pumpkin blueberry bar that she made. I know that you all want that. You got, you just come on in. Still, Jesus, they don't know who it is. He accepts their invitation Friends, let's park for a moment right here. Jesus is not one to impose himself on us. He always comes at invitation. Our invitation. He doesn't, he, he, he uses every opportunity to come into our lives. But ultimately, friends, 
It's us who have to invite him along to walk alongside of us. And here he was even going to go outside and continue going. And they said, no, you come on in. That, that hospitality that, that's ingrained in, in you is from God. So he goes in and he, uh, and I don't know how he gets away with this because can you imagine, okay, guys, all right? I want you to imagine this for a moment. So guys who, particularly if you've been married or, or, um, or anybody who's married, all right, that works. So you come in and whoever's domain the kitchen is and putting on this stuff, and then you bring a guest in and your guest decides that they are going to serve the food. And in fact, what Jesus does, he doesn't even say that he's going to serve the food. He takes the bread, and he blesses the bread. Now, it doesn't say in there that he got permission. It doesn't say, it doesn't say, he just takes it. And he breaks the bread. And at that moment, what does the scripture say? They recognize who he is. And at that moment, he goes... That's because he doesn't want to get in trouble with the hostess. <laughs> At the moment he breaks the bread, they figure out it's revealed to them who he is. Now, how that happened, knowing Jesus, I can't imagine that Jesus just took the bread and said, I'll, I'll take care of this one. It doesn't say in here how that happened. It just says that he took the bread. Now, he's a guest. And somehow those guests figured out that there's a reason for him to take control. Ultimately, friends, all things belong to God. And those followers in that room knew that they needed to yield what they understood to be their own to someone else. And they still didn't know who he was. But they said, here, you take it. And when he broke the bread, they recognized who he was. Friends, I think that's really telling for us as Christians. Jesus says when you are together and when you allow me to use the things that I've already given to you so that this kingdom can be a part of, when, when that bread is broken, people will see me. When you share the gifts that God has given to you, whatever they might be, when you share them, Jesus is recognized. Maybe not everybody sees it the way that you might see it, but he's there. That broken bread, the body of Christ, is the church who all of us are a part of. We may not always understand but share the bread so that Christ can be seen. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much that you call us to be a community of faith, that we're not to do it alone, but to do it with others. May you use us so that you can be seen. And all of God's people said, I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able, and we're going to sing in the garden. <laughs>